So where do babies come from? That's a question that every single one of us has asked at some point in our lives. Maybe you were the lucky one to even try to explain the details of that process. Now we have a pretty good idea on the activity that creates babies, but what's really going on inside the human body to allow for this amazing process to occur? So we're gonna talk about the first half of this story, or in other words, where half of our genetic material comes from with the female reproductive cycle. Now, when we first decided to film this, we were gonna do it in one shot, one take, but we decided that we should break it down into four separate videos, and that's because, let's be honest, the female reproductive cycle can be a little bit daunting and complex. So today's video, we're gonna start with the beginning of the cycle, which starts with period cramps. Then we're gonna move on to ovulation, Fourth, third video will be fertilization, and our fourth video will put everything together in a tight little package to hopefully put all the pieces together and answer any questions that may be confusing about this. So yes, we are gonna go on a journey of anatomical awesomeness with the cadavers, but this is gonna be a journey that includes period cramps, mood swings, ovulation, and prepping a uterus for baby time. Let's get to this. Welcome back to the Anatomy Lab, everyone. I'm Jonathan Venyon. I'm excited to go over the female reproductive cycle with you today. Yes, we're gonna see some really cool anatomical structures in the cadavers, like a uterus, we'll see ovaries, even brain structures that contribute to the female reproductive cycle. Now, most women don't refer to it as the female reproductive cycle. Most women say monthly periods, monthly cycle, menstrual cycle. But the commonality between all those different names is there's this idea of a cycle, something that tends to repeat itself once every month or so. But let's narrow down that timeline a little bit more specifically. The range is actually from 24 to 35 days, depending on the female. That's the typical range for the female reproductive cycle. But we're gonna stick with 28 days just to give us a framework to start with. So now that we've established this 28 day time period that we're going to be dealing with, Let's also go a little bit further and talk about the two main goals that I want you to think about throughout the duration of this video. One of the goals of this cycle is to successfully release an egg from the ovary, or in other words, have ovulation occur. The second goal I want you to think about is to prepare the inside lining of the uterus for a potential egg that gets fertilized so it can implant successfully into the lining of the uterus and a placenta can develop and baby time happens and all this magic and you know the rest of the story for the most part but those are our two main goals and to go a little bit further with that remember we had 28 days the first goal tends to occur in the first 14 days so day 1 to 14 is where we're really focusing on getting an egg ready to ovulate or come out of the ovary that's referred to as the follicular phase day 1 through 14 the second goal remember we said prepare the inside lining of the uterus that's referred to as luteal phase, and that goes from about day 15 to day 28. So let's go into a little bit more detail about that follicular phase. The follicular phase starts with day one, and that starts with the period. And so essentially women experience menstrual bleeding, and typically they experience cramping. And this occurs in the uterus. And why is this occurring? It's essentially the uterus is saying, well, we didn't get pregnant, so we need to start the whole cycle over again. So take a look down here at the cadaver here. This is a sagittal cut, so right through the midline of the body so you can see inside to the pelvic cavity here. Now this is the vaginal canal right there. And you can see the uterus here. And what I'm probing specifically here is the myometrium of the uterus. Myo just means muscle. So this is the smooth muscle of the uterus. In here is the inside lining of the uterus that we refer to as the endometrium. This is the layer that sloughs off during a period and actually will move out and move down the vaginal canal. And that's responsible for the bleeding that women will experience during their period. But let's go into a little bit more detail of why this occurred. Again, pregnancy didn't occur during the previous cycle. And if pregnancy doesn't occur during the previous cycle, estrogen and progesterone levels tend to go down at the end of the previous cycle. And because of that, that creates this release of these other chemicals called prostaglandins. Prostaglandins do a couple of things. Prostaglandins cause vasoconstriction of the blood vessels that are going to the uterus. And if you vasoconstrict blood vessels going to the inside lining of the uterus, those cells that those blood vessels were feeding 
don't get a great blood supply and they start to die off. And that's the flaking or the sloughing of the inside lining of the uterus that's occurring during the period. Now, another thing that prostaglandins do, not so much fun, is they stimulate smooth muscle contractions. Go back to this cadaver dissection, all of this tissue that I'm probing here is essentially the smooth muscle of the uterus, and now it's getting stimulated to contract and squeeze, which helps propel the sloughing cells out of the uterus through the vaginal canal, but it also causes pain, so not so fun. Now the average range for period cramps or menstruation to occur is about three to five days. Yes, there are women who experience less and women who experience more, but we're going with that average about three to five days. One thing that I want you to take a look at is this graphical representation of the inside lining of the uterus or the thickness of the inside lining of the uterus. If you look at that red line, over those first three to five days, you can see the line goes down, signifying that essentially the inside lining of the uterus is getting thinner, but then you can see it's gonna to start to build back up over that 28 day cycle. And we'll talk about some of the reasons why that occurs. But before we go into any more of those details of the inside lining of the uterus building up over the cycle, we're gonna digest all the information that we learned on this first video. So thank you guys for watching. If you're new to us, please subscribe, ring the bell, you guys can see in the background on one of these sides here on the whiteboard, there's some pictures of Codex Anatomicus. They're an affiliate of ours. If you guys like anatomical artwork, go ahead and check them out. If you like snazzy IOHA t-shirts, we like them. I wear it. I have like five of them. I wear them over and over again. Anyway, if you're equipped with female reproductive anatomy, I wish your uteri the best until the next video. Or is it uteruses? Uteri? Uteruses? Who knows? Let's talk about that in the comments and figure it out.